But one of Pac-Man's most underrated strengths is his ability to keep his opponents off stage. He has a great variety of tools that can be used to intercept different types of recoveries or cover different options of a ledge. This video will go over how to edge guard and ledge trap your opponents as Pac-Man, as well as different setups that you can use. The first thing I'm going to go over in this video is edge guarding. Before I get into how Pac-Man can do this, I'm going to go over some general things that you need to keep in mind. First and foremost, whenever your opponent is off stage, you need to anticipate their different ways of recovering and what their preferred methods of recovery are. Let's take Fox as an example. Fox has two main recovery specials, Fox Illusion and Fire Fox. Fox's up special is slow and doesn't have a very large hitbox, so Fox ideally doesn't want to have to use it off stage. For that reason, he's going to mainly be trying to recover to the ledge with his side special, which is a lot faster and harder to hit him out of. Knowing this, you can put out a hitbox near the ledge in order to hit him out of Illusion, and force him to recover from the lower and use Fire Fox. From this point, it's a lot easier to gimp Fox since he's very vulnerable to spikes, stage spikes, or taking damage off stage. Next, let's go over what the drop zone is, as it's very important to a lot of Pax traps. Some characters like Falcon and Marth have up specials that struggle to snap to the ledge, or are best used to get to the ledge from a certain point off stage. For that reason, we'll try to move off stage to that position so that they can get to the ledge more easily. The consequence of this is that it's very predictable to tell where they'll recover from. This movement of drifting back to a point below the ledge is called the drop zone, and it's one of the best places to go for edge guards. This applies especially well with Pac, since a lot of his moves are very good at intercepting drop zone recoveries. With all of that terminology out the way, let's talk about what Pac-Man can do. Most of Pac's horizontal fruits are very good for stopping your opponent from trying to recover high or sideways to the ledge. Orange charges very quickly and covers a ton of space. It also launches at a very low angle, which can put some characters out of their recovery range if it hits them off stage. Additionally, against most characters with horizontal flips like Diddy Kong, Charizard, and especially Fox and Falco, Orange is very good at stuffing out those moves and forcing lower recoveries. Melon travels so slowly off stage, which can make it even better than Orange at intercepting horizontal recoveries in some instances. Additionally, if you can get into your hand, you can use it to cover the ledge and stop your opponent from grabbing onto it. There's also a frame trap that you can do with Melon off stage. If you throw it towards your opponent when you're near them, they can either get hit by Melon or air dodge. If they air dodge, you can punish them with a neutral air, which can actually combo into Melon sometimes. Throwing a key off stage might seem like a waste, but if your opponent is drifting back to the stage and not really paying attention, you can get an early kill near the blast zone with it. Once you get your opponent to recover low, you can use Cherry, Apple, Hydrant, or an Aerial to punish their drop zone. Cherry is especially good at this since it has so little knockback that it can lean to Gimps if it catches your opponent's double jump. Also, it's what you want to use most of the time to edgeguard villagers since it's super good at popping balloons. Apple and Hydrant are very great low committal options too, however they launch upwards which isn't the best angle for Gimping. Pac-Man unfortunately doesn't have a spike or a functional down air for that matter, so unfortunately it's hard to get kills off the drop zone baits. However, you can keep your opponent off stage for a really long time if you play your cards right using various edge guarding tools. Pax aerials are also very good at keeping people off stage. Neutral air is very fast, coming out on frame 3, and beats a ton of recovery specials, making it a very good tool for edge guarding. Additionally, its low knockback angle makes it really good at gimping characters with drops and recoveries. Pax back air is pretty average as it can launch people further from the ledge and potentially stage spike. Despite both of these moves being pretty good, forward air is probably Pac-Man's best aerial for edge guarding. It has very little knockback, making it great at catching double jumps, and has pretty good range and combos into itself and neutral air. These make it a great move for catching a recovery special or a double jump, and then launching your opponent further away from the ledge with another move. It also doesn't put people into tumble for a while, which is pretty much the main reason why Bowser Jr. gets obliterated off stage by Pack. Now suppose you don't have enough time to intercept your opponent's recovery, or they have a recovery that's really difficult to mess with off stage. Luckily for you, Pac-Man is also really good at two framing recoveries. Down tilt, down and angled forward tilt, dash attack, and power pellet can all hit below the ledge. Pac's forward and down smash can also hit below the ledge on these characters. However, by far your best two framing tool is Hydrant. If you run off stage and immediately drop it, it covers the ledge for a fairly long time and can potentially stage spike your opponent. If you don't already have a Hydrant on stage, this should be your go-to two framing tool. Now let's go over ledge trapping. Pac has a ton of different ledge traps he can use due to his variety of lingering projectiles. Pac-Man's ledge trapping game is largely based around baiting out a roll by covering the ledge and then punishing the roll with a melee attack. Of course, there are many exceptions to this, but this is one of the most basic and effective ways Pac can ledge trap. One of the best ways to set up a trap like this is by using Hydrant since it will cover, get up, attack, roll, and jump if it's launched near the ledge. There are two main ways you can do this. You can either run off back air the hydrant and then do a turnaround jab, or place the hydrant a little bit further back, up air it, then launch it with an up tilt. Both methods work a little bit differently, but are both quite useful. After you have the trap set, you can either wait to punish your opponent's roll with a grab fruit or smash attack, or trampoline under the hydrant to make sure your opponent gets launched regardless of what option they choose. This also counters hanging on the ledge since the hydrant will eventually fall off and hit your opponent after the invincibility wears off. Another really good trap is getting bell in your hand and throwing it downwards near the ledge. This works really well because if you're 
your opponent has any option other than roll, they will be stunned by the ledge leading to a free smash attack. And if they do decide to roll, you can just throw them back off stage. This step is really effective since it gives you enough time to react to whatever option your opponent chooses, however it can be countered by waiting on the ledge, so watch out for that. Lastly, let's talk about trampoline. Placing trampoline at the ledge covers every option except for jump, however it basically covers all four since if they jump they'll be in the same place. This makes ledge trapping a breeze since it becomes a matter of when your opponent inputs an option rather than what option they will choose. You can punish this with Galaxian, Back Air, or Bell which will combo into Power Pellet. Just be worried that your opponent can buffer Air Dodge out trampoline. As for characters who have flips or other ways to bypass the ledge, you're going to have to experiment with this for yourself. I found Hydrant to be pretty effective at punishing moves like Flip Kick and Afterburner Kick, however there are many different ways to go about catching ledge mixups. As always, keep in mind what options your opponent has and try to cover as many of those tools as you can. Overall, edge guarding and ledge trapping are very important to learn in order to become a better pack player. They can potentially net you some early kills or let you rack up a ton of damage while your opponent is off stage. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more competitive Smash 4 content. Also, let me know what topics you want me to cover in the future in the comments. I have some big projects in the works for the near future, so stay tuned for those. Until then, I'll see you all next time.